So the world descended into crisis, into a global crisis in 2020. When does it end? When does the astrology indicate it may end or settle? That's what this video is about. Stay tuned. So if there's one thing that astrology is really good for, it is good for timing. It actually is like a clock or a sky clock where the planets are measured by astrologers and those configurations are objectively true in terms of a point of measurement. It's where astrology actually might resemble science in a way because it's the art of measuring so the celestial bodies. Astronomers and astrologers actually have a lot of agreement around the measurement systems. That's not where they disagree. Astronomers just aren't into the kind of meaning that astrologers are in terms of deriving meaning from those measurements. But this is one thing astrology is very excellent at is it can tell us when things started and when things will end in terms of those planetary configurations. Um, and so when we are talking about the crisis that we're currently in, I'm just going to call it the crisis, the global crisis, because I don't want to get into specific trigger words that may trigger the algorithm. One thing about this crisis is it's very controversial to even discuss it. So I'm going to use adjectives or language that doesn't, um, you'll know what I'm talking about, okay? But I'm, I'm trying to be very specific here. I don't want to get, you know, weighed into controversial waters, let's say. So we know that this crisis begins in mid late 2019. One thing about the skies uh, in 2019 was that Jupiter entered Capricorn in December 2019, a very difficult spot for Jupiter, the sign of Jupiter's fall because Jupiter is exalted in Cancer. And so opposite Capricorn, Jupiter entered its sign of fall in 2019, right around the time when the first reports of the medical crisis we're in were emerging. That continued to get very difficult into uh, January 2020. I was actually living in China at the time, and I can tell you um, there was a real panic in China, particularly in southern China where I was living. In middle January, that's when it began. It was literally from one day to the next. I went to the school I was teaching at, and it was a total panic because in Guangdong province where I was living, that's where that's where there was a similar crisis in the early uh, aughts in 2002-2003 there. So everybody, it triggered some, some ancestral memory or it triggered some memories about that 20 year prior crisis. And that was in like January 18th or something. I don't remember the exact days, but that's when it, things really started escalating in terms of a crisis, but it wasn't like that in other parts of the world. It was just in Southern China. I left Southern China about 10 days later, had not been back since, but it wasn't until really March 11th, that's the date I'm using when the global health organizations announced, hey, this is a really challenging global situation. That's March 11th. And then that's when we start getting the, the dramatic policy response that changes the whole world. And that coincided with Saturn's ingress into Aquarius, which happened in the last weeks of March 2020. Saturn entered Aquarius and the whole world changes in terms of being way more restrictive, being online, being at home, technology-based, Zoom becomes the means of communication. People are staying home because of government dictate. So we can mark this Aquarian moment with Saturn and Aquarius and with Jupiter's movement into Capricorn being ruled by Saturn because Saturn rules both Capricorn and Aquarius. So it's a heavy Saturn phase that the global collective is in starting in December, 2019 with Jupiter's ingress into Capricorn and then really hitting hard when Saturn ingresses into Aquarius. So that's the first point here. And so often when astrologers try to time things, we, we like to explore the history of factual events against the backdrop of the movements of the heavens. And in this case, it's very clear that we're looking at Saturn ruled signs, Capricorn and Aquarius, and we're looking at transits through those signs, long-term outer planet transits, particularly those of Saturn and Jupiter. The great thing about it is, is that now we have something to look at because when those planets make changes in the sky, that may suggest changes in the material reality around what started when those planets first entered those signs. So that's the genius of astrology. You try to understand what happened, then what was happening in the sky, and then predict in the future when those things change, you get changes in the reality. And Jupiter and Saturn uh, co-present starts in December 2019. So Jupiter and Saturn were both in Capricorn in, in December 2019. 
most of 2020, except for those three months when Saturn went into Aquarius in the March, April, May uh, period. Um, and then Saturn and Jupiter finished out a co-presence in Capricorn all of the rest of 2020. And then in, at the end of 2020, they move into Aquarius within a few days of each other. And they've been co-present in Aquarius all of 2021, except for three months when Jupiter moved into Pisces. Um, what was that? May, June, July, 2021. We had that, that little break of the Saturn-Jupiter co-presence, but we're still in that now. Saturn and Jupiter will be co-present in Aquarius. They'll finish their co-presence together for this cycle in the remaining months of 2021. And then Jupiter goes into Pisces in December and Saturn and Jupiter will never travel together again until the next uh, cycle, which will be what it's every 20 years. So we're looking at 20 in the 2030s, uh, 2040. I don't have those exact dates up, but we get a real respite and a break from the Jupiter Saturn co-presence. So that's my first point. That's when the crisis may end is the first thing to start looking for. When Jupiter and Saturn leave their co-presence, then we're astrologically in a time that's similar to pre-December 2019. And I think we felt that a little bit this summer when Jupiter came into Pisces for three months in 2021. I know a lot of the world, there was a return to normalcy or a sense of some kind of normalcy um, that was different from the highly restrictive times that were experienced before May 2021. So look, that's my first point. Jupiter, Saturn, they lose their co-presence December 2021. I think we can start feeling maybe some shifts or some kind of changes of, in terms of coming out of a crisis. So, so secondly, I think there's an Aquarian theme or an Aquarian dominance for what we've been going through. I mentioned when Saturn came into Aquarius in March 2020 is when a lot of the government policy responses to the crisis triggered up this massive digital insular life that much of the world was forced into as a result of the government policy response. And so that the reason why that's so interesting is that Aquarius indicates as the significations of that sign, separation, isolation, boundaries and borders and new rules. Remember, Aquarius is ruled by Saturn, a planet of old structures, powerful structures. Uh, Aquarius is ruled by Mercury and Saturn via triplicity rulership. Mercury is the planet of technology, the planet of medicalization, the planet of uh, you know, medical rules and medical technologies. When those two things combine in terms of a government policy response that's digitized and medicalized, it really explains this moment we're in when we explore Aquarian significations. That those significations, those significations explain quite greatly and quite accurately the, this moment we're in. This is the second point. When do these Aquarian activations cease? Well, I've already said Jupiter will leave Aquarius in December 2021, so there will be less Aquarius. But Saturn does not leave Aquarius for good until March 2023, and so I think that even when Jupiter enters Pisces. When Saturn enters Pisces and leaves Aquarius, there will be even more sense of this part of the crisis is over. This very Aquarian, new rules, new structures, cold separation, restriction around med medicalization or technology, medical technology, that will all hopefully lessen. We'll settle into what this Aquarian moment brought to us. I mean, um, and so there'll be some normalcy, even if things don't ever return to how they were, I don't think they will. I think we'll just settle into normalcy around. It will be less of a shock to the system as Saturn leaves Aquarius. And then that's a 29 year cycle for Saturn. I think Saturn enters Aquarius in 2047 again. So we will not have this heavy, strong Saturn until the mid 2040s. Saturn will be in Aquarius. Saturn will be in Capricorn in the mid 2040s and then Aquarius in the late 2040s. So, uh, and that brings me to my next point is that these changes that we're going through, these Saturnine Aquarian changes around, you know, technocracy, technology, new rules, new structures, the industrial revolution, the fourth phase of the, of a fourth industrial revolution, they're calling it, uh, where you have biotech and injectables and tracking and tracing and digitization. That is all heavy Aquarian, new technologies of control that, you know, and I'm not gonna say, Look, there's a dark Aquarian, absolutely, and that's a. This is a whole debate that I'm, I don't really want to get into the, to this video, but there is potential um, opportunities and great expansions that can come with similar technologies, and I'm very optimistic that hopefully humanity can get to those expansions and can get to the positive sides of those technologies. But and this is the other thing: it's when Saturn leaves Aquarius in March 2023, Pluto 
the outer planet, the outer dwarf planet Pluto, which so many astrologers put so much on Pluto. They're obsessed with Pluto. I'm not saying they're wrong, but they really put a lot on it. Um, I think that there is some significance to, Plut to Pluto and having a long Pluto transit in Aquarius in the same month. So Pluto enters uh, Aquarius for, good, for the first time in March 2023, the same month that Saturn leaves Aquarius, Pluto comes into Aquarius. So in a way, and Pluto's a longer term cycle, it's more deep transformation. I think that um, this tells us that whatever happened here at the first part of the 2020s is going to linger for quite a long time. And the thing about these, the Pluto and Aquarius transit, it, it doesn't leave until the 2040s at some point, but it's right around the time of Ray Kurzweil's prediction of a singularity where technology becomes so advanced that it really changes the nature of human beings themselves. We're going to be engaged in a very long and serious Pluto transit in Aquarius leading up to this singularity point. It leads me to believe that I don't think we're going back and I think that some parts of this crisis that we've entered into, we're, it's just beginning in a way. And I talked about World War II and the first half of the 20th century earlier in this video. Remember that was a long-term multi-decade moment. I think we've entered something like that. Transformation after transformation of the, of the order of society. Maybe part of this, this point here is that the answer is that it may not end. This crisis may not end. It's just going to morph and change and get more strange and more interesting um, as we go uh, because of Pluto's transit. And we'll also have Uranus in the air sign Gemini. So we have a lot of air activation with these outer planets. Remember, all of the outer planets change signs by 2026. Pluto will be in Aquarius. Uranus will be in Gemini and Neptune will be in Aries. And maybe this is the third point, or I've even forgotten the points here, but the next point of this video is that that shift of the outer planet energy, I think, will be felt palpably as well. So look for changes in at least this opening few years of the crisis, and we'll have more shifts at that point into hopefully something better. Again, I try to stay optimistic. Andre Barbeau, the excellent, esteemed French astrologer who predicted the current crisis we're in very specifically, in very specific terms, he has a technique where he uses outer planet transits and their synodic cycles with each other, Jupiter, um, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. So those five modern outer, outer planets, he measures the distance of those planets between each other and then just gets a number. As the planets contract together, it's more of a crisis point. We hit the low in the Barbeau index. It's called the Barbeau Planetary Cyclic Index. We hit that low uh, in March 2022. So we're coming up now into the low point of his index. And then from that point on, the planets begin the expansion phase and their synodic cycles with each other. He says we'll enter into by 2025, 2026 is his date for this crisis ending. And I give a lot of credence because he predicted the crisis. Um, but he says by that point, we'll be in the expansion phase because so many of those cycles will be in the uh, morning phase or the early phase, just like the lunation cycle has the beginning, you have the young moon that goes into fullness. All of those uh, synodic cycles, or many of them, will be in that younger phase. Um, I think that the Barbeau prediction is very relevant here, and he says 2025 to 2026, and it's timed right to when all of those outer planets change signs. So if you take one thing from this video, 2025, 2026 is highly significant on multiple levels in terms of a, a collective shift. And Barbeau calls it like a, a world or a global civilization, the, the birth of this kind of new society. The terms he uses are very optimistic about what we'll be headed into. So I try to stay optimistic. And I'm, I'm thinking, hold on, hang on. Saturn leaves Aquarius March 2023, hang on for that. And then hang on for 2025, 2026, when Barbo's index is rising and all of those outer planet cycles are in the growth phase. And so that's the short uh, video here about when I think this crisis will end. Just keep in mind, different countries will have different responses. Different countries will behave differently. You might see all kinds of things happening, maybe more severely in certain places versus other places. This is not a video about that, but I want to leave you with that point. It's, this isn't going to be felt similarly everywhere. And the other thing is just some of the changes of this crisis are going to linger. Like I said, prepare for this shift to be a threshold that we're moving into a whole new reality of this uh, industrial revolution of the fourth kind 
with all kinds of new technologies really accelerating into the age we're about to enter. So I wish you all the best. Keep that op optimistic view. Your ancestors have faced crises like this all throughout human history. You have their blood, you know. We all have, I think if you get back like 10 generations, it's like thousands and thousands of ancestors. Those are strong ancestors. That's in your DNA encoded. So stay strong out there as we face this collective crisis. This is SJ Anderson. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming to my channel. You can support me by liking and subscribing the video. You can always go to my website, sjanderson144.com and schedule a astrology reading, a tarot reading, or you can support my Patreon. Helps keep the videos going. Have an awesome day. Talk soon.